So let's continue and let's look at the the groups function, the groups button. What this actually does is it performs a multi-group analysis on either two groups or three groups and it does this automatically uh, by uh, once you choose a grouping variable in your data set by examining the variables to see which ones have either our factors and have either uh, two grouping levels or three grouping levels. So you, uh, let me show you what I mean. But first let me say this is not meant to be just another PLS path modeling tool. That is, I developed it, I'm, I, I don't want to recreate existing PL, PLS path modeling capabilities. I've understated those. What I, the objective, the goal, the strategy, if you will, is to create new uh, capabilities that are not handled by other tools. MGA is a big problem. Groups, group, multi-group analysis is, is a, an issue with R, and very few of the existing tools, uh, perhaps, um, perhaps one, does a two-way MGA. What's an MGA? An MGA is when you uh, you want to know the differences between groups in your path diagram. Okay, so here's our here's our path diagram, and we see all these global coefficients and we have the bootstrap reports that indicate if you go over here to the bootstrap reports and we can see whether uh, the the paths are are significant or not at least whether z this is the only one that is not significant because it, uh, zero is inside the 95 percent confidence interval now wouldn't it be nice if we had a way to tell Let's say that our we have a, a, a set of a thousand samples, and half are male and half are female, and we want to know if there's a difference between the males and females with respect to any of these path coefficients. Or said a different way, is there an interaction of gender? Is there is gender a moderating factor that impacts the direct effects, or for that matter, the indirect effects, the total effects, anything? Now, when you're running a group analysis, just to examine whether there are significant differences in the path coefficients between two levels of a variable, two groups, if you will, which is an interaction, even if you, if you do discover there is a significant difference, and my software does that for you, you still are faced with the problem of uh, documenting and talking about explaining the measurement invariance, the metric invariance, which relates to the weights and loadings in those two different groups. Are the weights and loadings different in the two groups? That would indicate that males and females are responding differently uh, to the instrument. And therefore, you, you can't necessarily draw conclusions about the path coefficient differences. Also, uh, that's metric invariance. Also, there's such a thing as structural invariance, which relates to the scores on the latent variables themselves. Are the scores on the latent variable themselves in the two groups significantly different? Okay, I'm not aware of any MGA tool in a PLS package that does this for you, uh, th namely that will do a two-way or a three-way MGA and that will also give you comprehensive reports on the significant differences between the weights and loadings, not only the paths, the weights and loadings, the uh, direct effects, which is the same as the paths, the indirect effects, the total effects, the latent variable scores, and the R-squared values. Let me show you what I mean. So we hit the groups button and it automatically it looks in the data set that's active and it automatically it parses the variables and finds only those that have two or three levels they don't have to be a factor it could just be coded zero one you don't have to code it a factor it changes it to a factor and looks and i have two um, that experience is a three level grouping variable in this data set so we're going to do an MGA, 
And note, uh, the reports are extensive, and you can turn off all the non-significant pairwise differences, but we won't do that. And we will save them all to disk. And note, uh, you can do 100 resamples. I, I'm sorry, 10,000 resamples, but I'm going to leave it at 100. Let me tell you, while this runs, I'll talk about the nature of the algorithm. And we're going to save them to disk. So we say OK. And we get our little progress bar. While this is running, this does not perform a parametric uh, group difference test, like SAT or white. And the reason is because that's really not appropriate. In PLS path modeling is a distribu distribution-free uh, analysis technique. It performs a percentile permutation where it takes the difference that you observe in your two tests and then it takes the data and mixes it up over and over and over again into the two groups, constantly, iteratively re-estimating that difference at time and time and time again. You could do it 10,000 times. And what you get when you do that is a, it's like a bootstrap. You get a distribution you get a density function of all of the differences in those parameters over and over and over again. And then you can view where your test statistic lies. So if your observed path difference is 0.05, and 0.05 is way out here in the tail of the density function, density distribution function created by, by uh, randomly uh, segmenting the data into the two groups over and over again, then you know it's significant. Okay, th this is it. This approach is more consistent for PLS. Um, I, I, we could put the parametric approach in there, uh, but um, uh, maybe we will. Anyway, let's look at the results. Okay, so there. Note this notebook. Note how austere this is. It just adds the reports to the end, and the. The, perm, the group reports start with perm. So let's take a look. So here's paths. We had three different levels in our grouping variable. So for each of eight different parameters, we get the pairs of group differences. Group 1 and 2, group 1 and 3, and group 2 and 3. So this is the what we're primarily interested in. in a group difference, the path differences. That's where we document the the interaction. That's where we document the um, the difference, the significant difference in the effect between the groups. And so we get for all the paths, we get the global estimate. What was for the combined, and then the first group, the second group, the absolute difference. And it performs a count. It looks at the test statistic. We only did 100 resamples. But it places your test statistic in, in the order in which it occurs in the sequence of 100 retries. So if your test statistic is, is up at 99 or down near 0, you're at, the tail, you're at one of the tails of the distribution. Otherwise, you're not. Now, I'm, I'm going to teach a class. This isn't hard to understand, but it helps with diagrams and charts. And uh, So we look at, based on just the percentile, whether it's significant at alpha is less than 10%, whether it's significant at alpha less than 5%. And some are significant at 10, like this one, this path, and not at 5. Note that attitude, which if we go back to the actual diagram, attitude is the ultimate predicted latent construct. It's the ultimate endogenous construct in this model. So that's really what we would probably be most interested in the effect on. It's the one, it's the construct where all the paths end up, so to speak. Okay, so when we look at this, we see that there are significant differences from trust to attitude and from enjoyment to attitude. They're extreme, as a matter of fact. Percentile 1 out of 100, percentile 0 out of 100. Okay, so you get groups 1 and 2 
The differences between groups one and three for paths, the differences for groups two and three. That's the only way you can do it with three levels. You have to do pairwise comparisons. But now for the metric invariance, you get reports on the loadings, all of them. And you can suppress it so only the significant ones turn out both at five at ten percent and five percent. Actually, 10% is 5%, if you want to know the truth, and I'd have to explain this in detail. And 5% is actually 2.5%. But I stuck with the original alpha definitions. Um, this, is a very, this is a very restrictive, significant test. Note, it's, this is very common. Note how many loadings between the two groups in 1 and 2 are significantly different. Um, well, really not too many. We have partial metric invariance, which is about the best you can hope for. So those are the loadings 1 and 2, groups 1 and 2. Here are the loadings difference groups 1 and 3, again, partial. If they're significantly different in the loadings, that means people are respond in the two groups. Members of the two groups are responding differently to the instrument, which is a problem. You have measurement or metric invariance. Here's two, three, again, quite a few difference. Ideally, you don't want to see any yeses, but that's never going to happen. You're always going to have partial at, at best. Here are the weights. It's, it's very common to see differences in the weights and loadings. That's groups one and two. This is one and three, but let's go on. Cursor on over to the right. And uh, you'll see that also you have reports on the differences in the latent variable scores. This relates to structural invariance, structural measure, structural, um, yeah, structural metric, stru I'm sorry, structural measurement invariance. That is, uh, the model itself, the, the constructs that you're measuring, are they significantly different between the two? indicating you're not really testing the, the two models in the two groups for that construct or different things, different values altogether. And this is useful to know whether you report it or not. Okay, so there's one and two, one and three, two and three. Direct effects, which is the same as the paths. But also, indirect effects. It reports on the significance of the indirect effects between each pair of the groups. So here is uh, groups one and two. There are only three indirect effects in the model. And you get the group-wise differences, groups one and two, one and three, two and three. If you only have two groups, you're only going to have one report. I'm showing you three reports just to show you the extreme. If you have three groups, which no other software does that, if you just have two groups, you're only going to get one of these. Okay, so I hope I'm not complicating things. Total effects, which is direct and indirect. And then finally, R squared values. If you only have two groups, you're only going to see this one report, one and two. Okay, but R squared values. So you get quite a bit more information out of this. This MGA has a number of advantages. One, it's non-parametric. Works on an, uh, uh, a permutation, percentile permutation through uh, extreme bootstrapping. You can run as many as 5,000, 10,000 resamples. It is much more precise than any parametric test would be if you do not make any assumptions about the data, any distributional assumptions. Okay, so this is an advantage. Okay, um, let's go on and we'll look at Super Bootstrapper next.